Hi, welcome to another video. So today I have a old Weller soldering gun. Um, this guy's uh, definitely in need of some major repairs. It's a D550, the original D550, uh, not the newer version, which has less power than this one. Uh, this one has 240 or 325 watts. Um, if you hear that switch tick, it's got a double click on the switch um, but yeah it's obviously been patched together it's got a extra safe you can see the copper poking out of the uh, hacked together line cord and looks like the line cords had a few melty issues too um, so first things first I want to do a couple checks on this thing to see if it's even worth doing any restoration work on it so get out a multimeter set to ohms range just do some really quick checks like check and see if there's any shorts to the leads to the case here so that actually looks good that's good so that means there's no shorts through the unit actually uh, now let's check and see if these coils are going to be in okay condition so we pull the first trigger we should get some kind of reading seven ohms and two clicks Similar number of ohms, but it's 243, 25 watts. That's not a huge difference, so maybe that's okay. Or 5.8 ohms now, so it is actually dropped a little bit than the other setting. So this one's 7 something ohms, this one's 5 something ohms, 5 fives, 6s. Alright, so that's promising. That shows that the switch is still working and goes to high impedance when it's not being clicked, so that means that structurally this thing seems to be intact. So it looks like it just has regular Phillips. So let's open it up. So we got our three screws. Looks like our line cord just kind of curls around in here. There's our switch. It looks like it is actually an enamel uh, coated wrap there. So this is actually a transformer inside this thing and it is a uh, Pretty neat the way they get the high current so you can see this is just a piece of rolled steel So that's a real really easy way to get a, a core for a transformer Let's See the the actual laminations there And then this is a high turns count transformer right here, and this is one loop so this is a one turn transformer so you get uh, a really high boost in current between these two, uh, but a very, very low voltage on this output. Uh, we got a couple light bulbs at the front. Looks like it's got a little bar that jumps across there. Uh, looks like that just might be tapped off of that primary transfer. So these light bulbs may actually be at mains voltage. Nope, they have their own winding. That's good. I got a switch there. I have some contact cleaner. And I'm just going to go through and just give this a very general clean. I'm going to be pretty gentle with it because I don't want to uh, damage anything that's in here. But definitely replacing this line cord. Oh, we need a soldering gun to get that connection off. Alright, so I got a tool to go ahead and cut this wire off. Get rid of that old line cord. And I have a new line cord, which is just a salvage line cord. But it does have a marking on here to let you know which one's neutral. So we'll make sure we put that on a specific way so that the line that gets cut is going to be the hot wire by the switch and the neutral will always be connected through. And this is a polarized plug so that makes sure we do connect that around the correct way. Okay, the new lead is soldered on there. I tinned one of these so that way you can get a good connection to there and I don't have to worry about this copper getting weird in the future. Um, so this whole thing will just actually fall out of here take the whole coil out and now we can clean up these plastic bits separately so probably just use water on these and then just wipe them down nothing nothing special I don't want to uh, destroy any labels or anything so just a really quick wipe those down uh, and this part uh, probably not gonna do anything to any of this I don't really want to change any of that the switch I'm gonna give it a little bit of a clean um, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this contact cleaner and just spray in there which I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to operate that a bunch of times. Get a little on 
this side. And then I'm just going to wipe that down with a paper towel. Got her all cleaned up. Uh, let's get it reassembled and see what happens. Hopefully I can fit this one in there, but I'm going to put a little bigger of a wire nut in. We'll see. Hopefully there's enough case uh, space inside the case for this. Could solder this connection also, but that should do. So why do you need a soldering iron like this? And the reason why you need a big soldering iron like this is if you want to solder anything with a lot of mass to it, so a big ground plane or uh, a metal chassis or anything like that, um, you need an iron that can really heat up those, those surfaces quickly and melt the solder. Otherwise you won't be able to get a good connection. So this type of iron comes in very handy for heavy duty work, basically. So your regular little soldering iron, you know, it's 50 or 60 watts or 100 watts even, it's just not going to do the job, whereas this uh, large iron is going to be able to handle that extra power. Moment of truth, we're going to plug it in, see if it uh, catches fire. Explosions. Oh, no explosions. That's good. So we'll do the first click. Light bulbs work. You can see we're using about 108 watts, which is pretty low. Two clicks. Now you can hear it buzzing. 140, 140-ish watts. So it seems kind of low, but the tip may actually be a little worn out on this one. You can hear it buzzing. It's got that nice AC hum. You can see a little smoke coming off the tip. Low power, high power. Low power, off. So I got a uh, thermal imaging camera. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that pointed right at there and turn this thing on and we'll take a look and see how it does. So that's the low power setting. Heating up, heating up, heating up. Still getting hotter. Almost 200, 200 degrees C. It's going to high power mode. Two seventy-five, two eighty. So it's not fast, but I think uh, that soldering iron tip may need to be uh, need to be replaced. So that's something to look into. Uh, now that I know that the transformer is good and everything else is working on this just fine, it looks like that uh, the tip tip for this iron should definitely be a, a worthwhile replacement. You can see this one definitely stays hot for a long time. Once you get it hot, it stays there. So just looking around, you can see that there is a 200-260 watt D550PK from Weller that's available right now on Amazon. Uh, they're about $40. Um, that's the number one best seller in soldering guns. So. If you're looking for a replacement, that's probably the closest you're going to get to this. Um, and then the actual D550 themselves sell for uh, basically the same price still, uh, around that $40 mark uh, used on eBay. So whether you're looking for a new one or an old one, it basically uh, you pay about the same price. You can still get replacement parts for the old one. Um, which is great. So the uh, you know they have a lot of nice long nice long service life. You can see it cooling off. So yeah, a lower impedance tip would probably be required to get this thing up to its uh, 300 watts. So that's something uh, that needs to be done for this. All right. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.